So I'm talking about mystery box today, Scent Club mystery box. We dropped it last weekend, instantly sold out. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the fragrances that were featured in that kit because it was a mystery after all. You don't know what fragrances you're getting or receiving, those of you that were able to buy the kit. But find out about those fragrances and also some updates on the future of Scent Club. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yeah, today we're talking about Scent Club Mystery Box. This is what the mystery box comes in, a box like this. Inside it, there are 12 different samples like that. I curated 12 samples from 12 different brands and they're in there like that. Just to uh, give you guys a heads up, these were all sent by the brands and there were some... Um, some of the presentation was limited, so there might be some kits that will not receive like a sleeve of the sample. There are a lot of brands that didn't send sleeves. Some did, but there was less of it. So some of you might just receive the sample by itself, but uh, all of you will get all 12 samples, all those of you that bought the uh, Scent Club Mystery Box. So I'm gonna tell you about the fragrances afterwards. I just wanna give you some updates on what's going on in the future of the Scent Club kits. So this kit sold out really quickly. We are probably going to do more mystery boxes. Some maybe it's going to be very random. There's not going to be any like um, schedule for it. So if I'm able to curate 12 samples, I I'm going to go ahead and basically do a drop of mystery box. And this mystery box was going to launch a lot earlier, but because I was sick quite a bit earlier this year, and also some brands ran out of samples they were not able to provide. So this got delayed. So thankfully it launched now and it seems like you guys are very, very happy. And so we will be dropping more mystery boxes. It will be a complete surprise though. I, I will not announce it like I prepped you guys with this one. It, it would come uh, as a surprise. And uh, what's gonna happen going forward with, with all Scent Club kits, including the original regular ones and the mystery boxes, those of you that have bought in the past any of the Scent Club kits, you will get advance notice for the Scent Club kits. So you'll be automatically put on a newsletter list or a mailing list, unless you have uh, chosen to not receive marketing material. This is a Shopify feature when you sign up to, you know, to buy any Scent Club kits. Because some of you ask me if you can get on the list and I, I, I'm basically, we're only opening this to people that have actually purchased kits in the past. So that's how we're going to announce the future of any future Scent Club kits. And then the day after, I will be doing the video as usual. The only other thing is, we are going to downsize with the sample quantities or the kit quantities. Uh, it seems like not a, lot, not, not, not a lot of people are buying the kits now, now that it's been going for over a year. But uh, we went up to 450 kits with number four, and we're almost sold out with five and six. They're actually leveling out. We've got about 20 each left with five and six. And what I'm going to do is probably downsize it to 350 kit drops of the regular kits. With the mystery box, though, I'll probably up it a little bit so it can kind of balance it out. So just be warned that what happened with mystery box was we opened it up to people that have bought the kits in the in the past. And so they pretty much bought three quarters of the kits. In fact, it was probably about 80% of the kits were sold. So by the time I announced the mystery box the following day, most of them were sold out, unfortunately. I will do more in the future. Probably we'll do about 250 next mystery box and 350 for the future of the, the regular Scent Club kits. Uh, but we are going to be downsizing because I don't want to ask for a lot of juice from brands if we aren't able to sell the kits. And since they are taking longer to sell, I think it's time to lower the quantity of uh, the Scent Club kits. And there's going to be more demand then. And as I was saying, if uh, you haven't bought in the past, uh, probably buy one so that you can get on the newsletter list. Because uh, some of you emailed me and said, well, I didn't receive the notification for the mystery box. But uh, if you signed up to be notified... Uh, you definitely should have been notified because there are features in Shopify that my customer service team tells me that is, uh, you know, there to be able to market to people that have bought in the past. So uh, check your spam. And then also, if you do receive our e newsletters in spam, market is not spam. So 
uh, that you get these notifications because uh, if we're downsizing the quantity, I think these will sell out a lot faster, which is basically the idea of Scent Club. Uh, we kind of want to put a, a demand on it. The only reason I decided to do more was with uh, kit number four, 450 of them. So uh, I thought, you know, there was a demand for them, but I'm going to go ahead and downsize them. And if, if, if 350 is still also more, probably go down to 300. And once we notify the previous purchasers, I might not even have to do a, a, a video for the following day, which is almost what was happening with the mystery box because it was getting to a point where I'm like, is it worth doing the video now? I mean, even though I've shot it from days ago, can I put it up? Uh, but we did put it up. And so that's what's going on with the future. Also, a couple more things with Scent Club. So there's a, a chance for a couple of brands or many brands to hijack an actual kit, meaning they'll basically take it and uh, do their own fragrances uh, in the kit. Uh, I'm in, uh, you know, talks with a few brands. Uh, and uh, so those will be additional drops to our normal drops. So let's say, for example, we do a mystery box drop uh, that uh, I curate and some brand comes and says, I want to hijack that one, one of the kits and feature all our fragrances might do something like that. Uh, or let's say a brand comes and says, we want to hijack your original kits and we want to feature three of our fragrances. And in those kind of scenarios, it will be in addition. So I'm trying to find out ways to be able to do these hijacked kits in a way that it's beneficial to you guys. So fragrances that are not released, not selling publicly, online exclusives, you know, exclusive fragrances and things like that, that you can't really easily go get. Because if you can easily go get fragrances, it's not worth it for me to put, uh, you know, them in Scent Club. If you, uh, if they're, if the brand's fragrances are sold at Sephora, why bother putting in, putting them in Scent Club, you know, because they're going to be, uh, you know, easily accessible. You can smell them. So it's not worth for me to put them in Scent Club kits or even like Macy's or something. Uh, you're, uh, you know, it's easy to sample those. You can just walk in and smell them. What I like about Scent Club is that there are fragrances that are uh, pretty rare or e not easy to get uh, or very popular or some of my favorites. The, the, the difference between Mystery Box and Scent Club is Mystery Box, they are curated by me, but they're more modern releases. So everything in Mystery Box, the first one, was from late 2022 to now, 2023. But with the uh, main kits, my favorite fragrances. I'm trying to keep them my most favorite fragrances and also trying to figure out a way to make sure they're not like very uh, hyped fragrances that everybody, uh, you know, has gotten their noses on them. And because I, I want to make sure that it's beneficial to you guys and also the brands as well. So those are basically the updates on Scent Club Kit. And again, stay tuned for seven kit number seven and then possibly a hijacked kit before that possibly if if all goes well i have to make sure i like the fragrances and and things like that and then by kit number eight we will change the bottles as well but just keep in mind if there's a kit that is hijacked before kit number seven we'll still continue with the current black bottles on the main kits and then by the end of the year I feel like I will be able to do one more mystery box. I don't want to do too many of them uh, because it does take time and, it, you know, coordinating all these samples, making sure the counts were correct. And one thing I should do, I should let you know. And one of the one of the samples that was sent to me uh, and I'm going to get to it and I'll, I'll show you or I'll tell you about it. I won't be able to show you the sample, actually, because they're all packed. But one of the fragrances that was sent to me in samples was sent to me twice. Uh, the first time that it was sent to me was the time when all of you guys were having the leakages with your samples. Exactly what happened with mine with when I received the fragrances from this house. They all had leaked. The box was leaked. All the samples were, you know, some of them had none in them. Some had half of them in them. So it was all over the place. I had to hire somebody to come in and go through all these samples to make sure there's juice in them. And then also they had this kind of gold flaked kind of paint on the bottles, the sample bottles, and those had flaked off. So some of you might have some flaked off bottles, but they are all gone through to make sure that the, there's juice inside. 
uh, in those uh, samples. So while you guys were having leakage issues, I was having leakage issues with these, the samples that were sent to me. For some reason, I, I don't know what, what caused this, but they were coming in a box, not protected, and they were all in there, like hundreds of them. And, you know, there was just all kinds of leakage. So uh, that's one of the things uh, that you will notice. The juice is there, but some of the, the actual gold paint that's on the bottles have kind of flaked off. But unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get those uh, samples replaced because they did a second shipment because we had to go through a bunch and toss the, some of them. Unfortunately, it happened on the second round as well. But thankfully, we were able to salvage and we actually have, uh, you know, been able to, you know, fill all the samples. So let's talk about the fragrances now. The first fragrance in the kit, and I shouldn't say there was, I should say there was no specific order. And the way I ordered the fragrances was on the paperwork and the card you'll receive in the mystery box. The first fragrance on the list is the first fragrance was actually sent to me and received. So that's how it was organized, but there's no actual order for these fragrances. It's just how I was documenting receipt of uh, the fragrances. Number one happened to be Rosarine from Parfums du Cita. So Parfums du Cita's Rosarine is the latest fragrance from this house. It's a 2023 launch. Remember, I read about this, but I didn't tell you the name. Let your senses be captivated by the beauty and complexity of the rose in all its floral and fruity, green and earthy, spicy and gourmand glory a mesmerizing tribute to the Queen of Flowers and its timeless nuance charm. This is definitely a rose bomb, but it's also kind of patchouli-esque. It has notes of cinnamon, Bulgarian rose, raspberries, lychee fruits, bergamot, may rose, orris butter, jasmine sandback, amorous wood, incense, ambrette, coriander, patchouli, vetiver, sandalwood, vanilla, cocoa, and benzoin. This is created by Pisara Umavijani. So she just gave birth, by the way, she's a mom now, but let's go ahead and quickly smell this fragrance. If you like patchouli and rose, I find this to be kind of a cheaper fragrance. You're gonna like this one, rose patchouli kind of a thing. It's gorgeous. It's um, powdery for sure. I'm getting powder, orris, and then jasmine also is highlighted with the cinnamon. The cinnamon is definitely there. It kind of reminds me of a, a bit of a vintage kind of a rose fragrance but super delicious. I'm not getting as much gourmand with this, but I think the patchouli kind of creates the chocolatiness. And even though there's cocoa in there, so it kind of amplifies it, but I wouldn't really call this like a gourmand fragrance, but it has kind of gourmand facets and things like that. So that's the first fragrance in the kit. It's a Ducita, Parfums Ducita Rosarine, this one right here. All right, and then number two, this is Sarah Baker's Gold Spot, this one right here. So this is the second fragrance that I got. That's why I documented it at number two, because that's when I received number two. And Sarah Baker's Gold Spot is a delicious gourmand fragrance with oud. And it's basically taking Symmetry, one of her first fragrances in the S. Baker collection, which uh, became Ludo, which was also featured in my Scent Club, Scent Club kit number two, and then graduated to become more gourmand with Gold Spot. So what I read to you last week was, why be a star when you can be a legend? Delicious notes of butterscotch and sweet myrrh bathe the darker tones of oud, cacao, and cypriol in gilded indulgence. This is definitely has become more gourmand, even more gourmand than Ludo. And it's delicious with notes of bergamot, pettigran, cypriol, orange blossom, butterscotch, laotian oud, suyufi agarwood, dark chocolate, sweet myrrh, musk, amber, and vanilla. It created by Chris Maurice. Are you guys familiar with the smell of this one? It's definitely, if you, if you like the idea of Ludo, maybe it was a bit too oudy for you and you want a little bit more of a gourmand thing, this definitely is more gourmand. Butterscotch, what I get with this one are sticky sweets, uh, kind of a sticky chocolate, sticky butterscotch, caramelly kind of notes in here. Really delicious, and you can really experience the myrrh in here too. It's definitely pr uh, prominent, and it gives it a, a bit of a fizziness. Uh, there's definitely a bit of a fizzy vibe. So this is Gold Spot, sample number two in uh, Scent Club Mystery Box. Next fragrance is from a house called Dorsay. This is Sur Telebre EQ. I'm probably butchering the name of this one. I'm just gonna go by EQ. This is a 2023 launch, whereas this Sarah Baker uh, was a 2022. It launched late last year. In fact, I have a video of that on the channel. You can go catch that. But this one was a love at first sniff because I like musky fragrances and this is a floral musky fragrance. 
A floral musky fragrance evoking endless love with this perfume surrender to this radiant union and celebrate the iris and musk intertwining of your two bodies and souls. This is what I read about this fragrance when I announced the mystery box. And that's just exactly it. It's created by Dominic Ropion. I've got two Dominic Ropion fragrances in mystery box. And this features notes of pink berry extract, amber absolute, jasmine accord, iris concrete, patchouli essence, and cashmere. And if you like musky fragrances, floral musky fragrances with kind of like a earthy woodiness in the dry down, this is really, really super delicious. I feel like I've got iris uh, covered in this uh, video. I mean, this kit uh, quite a bit. Uh, so iris lovers will probably appreciate this uh, kit because there's definitely a variety of iris fragrances here and also musky fragrances. And if you're a fan of Dominic Ropion, he's in here twice as well. So this one, it's it's very, very sexy. It's very, very sexy. It's musky. You've got some spice there and also floral touches. I really like it. It's a skin scent for me. It's closer to the skin, but the smell is fantastic. I think this is a very intimate fragrance. Somebody close to you will smell you rather than you're leaving uh, you know, a massive trail everywhere. So really wonderful offering. In fact, this house is great. I really enjoy this house. Uh, I've got some mentions of their fragrances in various videos, but I'm going to be doing a video soon on that house, so stay tuned. And then at number four, we've got Juicebox's Visionary Eye. And this was the fourth fragrance that was received to be put into the mystery box. This was launched in late 2022, whereas uh, the Dorsey was uh, 2023. This fragrance is a perfect stylistic synthesis between traditional compositions and original accords. A surprising creative trail featuring one of perfumery's most precious and classic raw materials, Iris, experimenting with new olfactory combinations. So this one came out last year, inspired by David Bowie's music and it's an iris bomb. It features notes of bergamot, wormwood, white thyme, cinnamon, lavender, iris oris, sandalwood, vanilla, and musk. And this one is created by Dominic Ropion as well. Are you guys familiar with Juicebox? It's an Italian house focusing on music and perfume, obviously. And this, this particular fragrance is really great if you love the idea of iris and of course, Dominic Ropion fragrances. And this one I like because it's got that wormwood. So it adds this kind of bright, kind of green uh, booziness. Uh, super amazing, really great. And I can really smell the creaminess of the iris in this. Really wonderful. I really, really love the creaminess in the iris. Iris is powdery, but when you're using the oris butter, there's oris here, it does create a kind of a creamy undertone while it's being powdery. And here it's sweetened up with the vanilla, of course. And then you're also getting some aromatic touches from the, the um, the lavender that's in here and of course the 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 sandalwood in the base notes is also cre uh, creating a creaminess so this is juice box visionary eye check that out if you don't know it it's a wonderful offering all right the next fragrance i'm talking about that's featured in mystery box that number five it's kajal's new fragrance masa who's familiar with this house kajal so this was the fragrance that we had a bit of an issue receiving the samples and you'll notice that when you look at your sample, unless you got one of the ones that had a bit of a gold flakes peeled off of the, the bottle, uh, you won't notice there's any problems with it. But this, uh, when they were shipping this fragrance, there was some uh, leakage. So I just wanted to warn you about that. But this fragrance is a perfect balance of herbal freshness and ambered woody notes. It opens with a delicious combination of bergamot, mirabelle, and grapefruit highlighted by warm spicy wafts of ginger root and ends with a wrapping mixture of amber, vanilla, atlas cedarwood, vetiver, guyac wood, and violet. So those are quite a bit of notes there, but obviously there's more notes in this fragrance with bergamot, mirabelle, grapefruit, ginger root, patchouli. There's an aquatic accord, pentagram, cardamom, amber, vanilla, atlas cedar, vetiver, guyac wood, violet. This perfume is created by Mark Daniel Heimgartner. This is a fairly new perfumer for me. I have not experienced his fragrances until Kajal Masa. Who sampled this one and who's familiar with it? Do let me know. This definitely is exactly how it reads. It's definitely this major freshness and warmth and woods and amber in the base. That's how it wears. And along the way, there's definitely something marine aquatic in there as well. It's kind of like the balance of the fragrance with the freshness up top 
and the warm amber woodiness in the base. That marine layer is kind of like uh, separating the top and the bottom notes and kind of balancing it out. Along the way, I also get kind of a sweet hard candy with spices combo here as well. Wonderful offering from the house of uh, Kajal. This is Masa. This is a brand new release. Check it out if you don't know it. So the next fragrance I'm talking about is from Angelo's Creations Olfactives. It's the latest one from this house called Krinos. And it's an amazing fragrance that he's created here. It's my friend uh, Angelos ba uh, Balam Balamis. And I actually smelled this fragrance uh, last March, April. And I said, this has got to be in uh, Sun Club Mystery Box. So now it is. What he wrote for this fragrance is flowers of my alley matching soft, clean linens with the power of green, white florals and smoothness of sandalwood and musks. To me, the star of this fragrance is the Lily of the Valley. It does have a bit of a a vintage touch to it. If you like the idea of vintage perfumery, I get a major vintage touch with this one. Uh, he me He's mentioned that it's definitely very modern, but I think it's the idea of the Lily of the Valley, which creates a, a bit of a um, vintage uh, edge to the fragrance. But it's rhubarb with raspberry, timut pepper, lily, lily of the valley, orange flowers, jasmine sandback, cassis, white musk, sandalwood, ethereal amber, sea breeze. I've also get a leathery undertone here with this one. I'm just wondering where it comes from. It's just a really, really wonderful offering. Those of you that really enjoy wearing uh, the uh, the uh, Lily of the Valley and fragrances, you've got to get your nose on this one. It smells fantastic. So this is Krinos from the House of Angelos Creations Olfactives. Check that out if you can get, uh, get your hands on it. But I'm sure you're going to check it out with the mystery box. But let's go ahead and quickly smell this one. Did I smell the last fragrance? I'm, I'm, I'm losing it here. Yeah, it's very airy breezy, but there's this kind of uh, depth to it as well. Uh, definitely something deep in there because the flowers, the green floral touches of the lily of the valley is really, really prominent, highlighting the fragrance. But there's definitely depth in there, kind of an ambery muskiness in the dry down. And as I said, I, I get something leathery in here as well, which is kind of really fantastic. So that's Krinos. All right, the next fragrance I'm talking about is from the house of Javoy. It's Musk Palace, this one right here. So Musk Palace is the latest from Javoy, and it's definitely a skin scent, but musk. It also has a really great trail, but a soft, clean, musky trail. This is a clean perfume with powdery, floral, and fruity echoes. This fragrance is an original creation that gives pride of place to intense musks and a memorable trail. Notes include ambrette, bergamot, Ocean Spray, Musk, Iris, Peach, Tonka Beans, and it's created by Vanina Muracchiole. This is a really, really great fragrance. To me, it's a very clean musk. It's, it's super clean and uh, also close to the skin, but it does have that trail. They are definitely right about it. There's something sweet in here that does project uh, against the musky notes, but Ambrette is king here for sure. I don't get much of the Ocean Spray. I don't. The iris is prominent. It creates this powdery effect as well. And I think I'm getting this kind of sweetness from the peach note. There's a light fruitiness in here as well. It's a great fragrance, but it's not for those folks that like really intense beast mode uh, fragrances that are showstoppers or head turners. This one, just uh, like um, uh, the, the Dorsey er, earlier, what I mentioned, uh, it's closer to the skin. So somebody has to get close to you to kind of really smell your fragrance, but I think it really blends beautifully with um, some, uh, you know, body bodies and things like that. It just creates this re really wonderful musk with your own natural musk. So this is Musk Palace from Javoy. So next up, going to the house of day three fragrances, this is Say Less. If you recall, I did a video on this house and this one turned out to be my favorite. It is a really, really great fragrance from this house. I specifically asked the brand to say if they can, you know, want to be featured in Mystery Box, and they said yes. This one to me is a, a soapy iris fragrance that I really, really love. What they wrote was, sparkling lemon and citron gives way to iris and candied violet, smoky woods and aromatic narcissus flower in this expertly balanced eau de parfum. In the base, you are greeted by an elegant musk and amber, suitable for everyday wear as a signature scent. Yes, 
I really, really love the way this fragrance smelled more than the award winner that uh, the brand is known for, uh, La, La Tacita de Café. Uh, so I really uh, was excited about this one and it turned out to be another Iris fragrance. We've got several here in this box. Those of you that love Iris are gonna be happy with this box. But this features notes of musk, Iris, candied violet, lemons, rain, Cedrat or Citron note, Bergamot, Narcissus, Lychee, Smoky Woods, and Amber. Let's go ahead and quickly smell this. I really love it. There's got a, it's got a really great base. I almost feel like there's patchouli in the base. Something earthy and also woody that's very, very sexy is under there. But perhaps it's uh, the combination of the notes that's creating this kind of earthiness under there, which, which got this kind of very sexy quality about it. But it's definitely a very soapy, clean fragrance. Those of you that like those kind of fragrances need to try this one. Um, you're going to try it if you uh, ended up with a mystery box, but that's say less from day three fragrances. And then going to the house of Parfums Cortana, this is Irofante, this one right here. And this one did win an uh, Arnold Faction Awards, uh, was a winner uh, a couple months ago. And I had reached out to him and said, let's go ahead and do the scent club and uh, grateful that uh, Joseph from uh, Parfums Cortana was able to provide samples for this one. So this particular sample, some of you might have it in a sleeve. Very few of you just have the sample because we ran out of the sleeves. But this fragrance says, take a rocket ride to the stars with the smoky amber leather gourmand fragrance. And the notes and accords are suede, gasoline accord, nutmeg, styrax, pyrogene, smoky leather, golden amber, cashmere vetiver and it's created by Luca Maffei. So to me, this fragrance probably out of all of them might be the most out there. And I think it's because of that gasoline accord. It's very suede leathery. I almost also get like gunpowder with this one, but the gasoline accord provides exhaust, engine exhaust and things like that, but also electronics, chips and uh, um, resistors and capacitors and all the stuff when it smokes up. For me, that's what it smells like. So I think this one's the most out there fragrance, but it's done so well. It's executed really, really perfectly by Luca Maffei. And I wanted to make sure I highlight it for you guys to check it out. Because this is a very, I mean, this brand is out there, but it's not really widely out there. So it was a, a great thing to be able to share uh, Ira Fonte with you guys so you can smell what uh, the idea of this fragrance is all about. So this is... Uh, Parfums Cortana Irofante, this one right here. So check that out if you don't know it. I think you're gonna like it if you like out there kind of fragrances, gasoline and things like that, leather for sure, because that's definitely a leathery fragrance. And again, as I said, I curated this list in the order of the fragrances that I received. So the next fragrance I'm talking about is from Ormond Jane. This is Muscat, this one right here. Any of you familiar with this one? I noticed that this is just making its way out there here, but it was launched late last year. I believe it was launched as an exclusive for some um, territories, but now I do see it out there on the market here as well. And this one is inspired by ingredients native to the ancient Silk Road spanning Asia. This is an amberesque fragrance with unusual gourmand notes, including dates, cloves, cardamom, and halva. I love halva. Delicate notes of oud, vanilla, oak moss, and rose create a cocooning effect like a second skin. So super delicious, kind of a Middle Eastern-esque style, and it features notes of saffron, cinnamon, date oil, rose, absolute frankincense, incense, halwa, oud, vanilla, oak moss, cardamom. I couldn't find a perfumer name for this one. It wears really beautifully, intense, bit musky, smoky, and leathery as well. And I think it's the sweet notes that, and the saffron uh, creates uh, that kind of uh, Middle Eastern vibe with this one. Really wonderful. I, I, I agree with their term cocooning. It does have a cocooning effect and I like that about it. Uh, and uh, it reminds me a little bit of other kind of Middle Eastern fragrances, but this is its own thing, but super amazing and very musky for me. On me, it's kind of musky and also really, really sexy once it hits my body and I have a little perspiration and the fragrance is projecting on off of me, it smells amazing. So this is Muscat from the house of Ormond Jane, and that is the 10th fragrance. So next fragrance, a fragrance house I discovered last year at Exxon's in June 2022. It's just now making its way out there, and I'm so grateful to feature this fragrance here in this uh, kit. This is from a house called Olibanum. This is Sacra. 
this is a 2022 launch. And then what they basically wrote, which is basically what I got off their website, is mineral resins warmed up by a touch of fir balsam, the original perfume. So basically features three notes, olibanum, olibanum, I should say, or frankincense, fir balsam, and white musk. Perfumer is unknown. It does wear a bit simplistic. It's a bit church-like and also a bit forest-like and also musky. Really love it. It smells like incense burning next to a forest. For me, it reminds me of a church service where it's snow-covered pine trees because there's a coldness about this one. Uh, really, really great smell. If you like the idea of incense, kind of woods, forest, cold, not warm. There's no warm notes in this one, not at all. A clean, uh, this is definitely one for you to try. So that's Olibanum Sacra, this one right here. And let me just show you the, the kit uh, is that's available from this house. This is Olibanum's kit. They're just making it their debut out there. So the fragrance comes in there. And here is a discovery set of a lot of their fragrances. Check that out. There's so many of them. And they're really also 50 ml bottles marked uh, priced under $100. So really great collection of fragrances. And uh, I think this brand will do great at places like... Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank. You, you know, unique stores that have unique uh, products. Urban Outfitters is what a uh, one a place, and what's their sister brand that sells feminine clothing? I think those stores might be perfect for this brand because I think the the brand is uh, quite unique with the fragrances. But anyway, if you haven't gotten your nose on Sakura, get it. But if you bought the kit, you will be able to smell it soon. And last but not least, going to the house of Maitre Parfum at Gantier, it's Ombre Tibet. This one right here. So Ombre Tibet is the latest fragrance from Maitre Parfum at Gantier and yet another amber. They now have three or four different amber fragrances. Stay tuned for a video on all the amber fragrances from this house very soon. And this one is a spicy take on. Well, they're all pretty spicy, but this one is kind of Asian spice take on uh, amber fragrance. And what they wrote about this is saffron color fabrics, gold statues, mystic mandalas, textures, rich colors, and the finest raw ingredients have inspired this creation. The mystical notes of incense and sandalwood are blended with a floral fruity accord of geranium and davana with a soft and powdery dry down of amber, sandalwood, and musks. It's great. It's not ombre per se, but it does remind me of it. It's the same house. It has a bit of a similar DNA, but a wonderful offering from this house. If you're an amber lover, you must get your nose on this. It features notes of cistus, eucalyptus, davana, incense, rose, geranium, patchouli, smoky woods, sandalwood, ambergris, vanilla, and musks. Let's go ahead and smell it. I don't know who the perfumer on this one is, but definitely really beautiful amber, very spicy, syrupy, and also powdery, highlighting some light fruitiness there. Definitely smoky incense comes in, loads and loads of woods, and some light fruitiness, uh, Really great fragrance. I think if you like Ombre Perso, you'll definitely appreciate this one. I think this one's closer to Ombre Perso in comparison to Ombre Mythique. And I believe what they did was they have home fragrances. And the inspiration for this one is that home fragrance called Ombre Tibet. And I believe a lot of their customers came in asking for actually a fragrance they can wear versus the, the you know, the home fragrance. So they've created a... Uh, body version of ombre tibet here so that's the last fragrance in the kit a mystery box it sold out really quickly guys and i think in the future we will do more but like i said we're gonna keep it very conservative with the quantities going forward and uh, we don't want to you know take too much perfume from the brands and have it not sell out but once again i'll show you a little bit of what scent club mystery box looks like just keep in mind, some of you not might not receive the sleeves of the perfume samples because we ran out. We weren't able to have them. But all 12 samples are in all 200 kits. Uh, it's um, 
you should be receiving it very soon if you haven't already. Either way, thanks so much for watching today's very, very long video explaining and going over all the fragrances in uh, Scent Club Mystery Box. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Put a comment down below. If you've received your mystery box, let me know. Put a comment down as well. And let me know what you like about the fragrances. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <laughs>